what we're going to do in our next video is try to verify the impedance of common coaxial cables which are used at RF and uh, microwave frequencies. Uh, microwave Office allows us to um, uh, do this kind of simulation uh, through an element called coax. So uh, we will be setting up the schematic and looking at the technique and the simulation which allows you to verify the impedance of a um, coaxial cable. First of all, let us remind ourselves of what a coaxial cable uh, looks like. Well, uh, inside the uh, cable we've got a uh, center conductor uh, which is shown in this uh, picture as the center core and then around it we've got a dielectric material which insulates it from the uh, outer conductor which forms a metallic shield which is usually connected to ground. Now, if we look at a cross-section of uh, this coaxial cable, it will look something like this, where di is the diameter of the inner conductor and do is the inner diameter of the outer conductor, or if you will, the diameter of the dielectric material. So, coming back to microwave office, uh, as, as we usually do, we start with a uh, new schematic. So we right-click on circuit schematic and open a new one. We'll call it RG58, which is a very common cable which is used at radio frequency. We press Control l to fetch our element, which I mentioned before is called coax. We just double-click on it and then place it on the schematic like so. Now, if we look at the various parameters of uh, this element, of this circuit element, we can see that we've got the inner diameter, di, which we've just uh, seen uh, in the previous picture, and do, which is the outer diameter, uh, or, um, if you will, the inner diameter of the outer conductor, the length of the line, uh, we'll come on to that shortly, er represents epsilon r, uh, so the dielectric constant of the material, um, and also, we've got two additional parameters, um, the uh, loss tangent, which is indicated as T and, and this basically accounts for the energy that is lost in uh, the dielectric material, and is typical of a specific dielectric. We will leave it to zero for now. Rho also uh, indicates the uh, condu conductivity, uh, the resistivity of the metal, um, and uh, so it, it's basically used to account for the fact that uh, uh, a metal is got a, a finite resistivity, uh, it is never zero, uh, but we'll leave it alone for now. Uh, what we need to do is to actually uh, insert, connect our outer shield um, to something. As you can see, uh, terminals 3 and 4 uh, must be connected to something that can't be left floating. So let's get ourselves a couple of ground connections and let us ground our shield just like that. And then uh, we need to uh, obviously uh, pick the right values for the inner outer diameter length and electric constant. For the RG58, the inner diameter happens to be equal to 0.81 millimeters. And for the uh, outer diameter, we've got a value of 2.9. The dielectric material uh, of uh, the insulator in this case is 2.3. Now, when it comes to working out which length we're going to use, we need to uh, refer back to the notes and to the technique which can be used to um, work out the impedance of a line. Um, if, whether it's microstrip or coaxial, it doesn't really matter. So the first step is to calculate the uh, actual velocity, the speed of the signal within our line. As we mentioned in the notes, uh, when you've got a dielectric material, the speed at which the signal propagates tends to be lower by a certain factor. And that factor tends to be 1 over the square root of epsilon r. So if c, which is the speed of light, is the maximum velocity of propagation achievable, we divide that by the square root of 2.3 and we obtain uh, two-thirds of the speed of light as a result. That will be the speed of propagation of our signal. This is very important because obviously the wavelength is directly related to the speed of propagation of the signal. So if you don't have the right velocity, then you're going to uh, have all your calculations completely wrong. What we work out next is the value for an eighth of the wavelength. As we've seen in the notes, 
if you have a line which is an eighth of a wavelength long, if you just terminate the line with an open circuit or a short circuit, then when you measure the impedance, the input impedance of the line, you will get uh, the characteristic impedance of the line. Lambda over 8 is equal to an eighth of V over F. The frequency at which we will be simulating, it's picked as 1 gigahertz, but you could have picked uh, other frequencies. It's just for simplicity we picked 1 gigahertz. Generally a cable will have a certain um, rating which tells you that it can work between a certain frequency and a, and a certain frequency. Okay, so the uh, velocity or the, the speed of the signal in the cable will, will be 1.98 uh, times 10 to the 8th uh, met meters per second. The length of the line will therefore turn out to be lambda over 8 equal 24.7 millimeters. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to our schematic and then we're going to use 24.7 as the length of our line. Okay, so we've got the inner diameter, the uh, uh, um, outer diameter, uh, the uh, length of the line, uh, with the, uh, the electric constant and we said that we'll leave losses alone for the simulation. Now you can choose to terminate your line with either an open circuit or a short circuit and then uh, you just uh, take the uh, absolute value of the impedance seen from port 1 and that would give the characteristic impedance of your line. It doesn't matter on the simulation whether you choose an open circuit or a short circuit. Personally I prefer to use a short circuit however in actual um, laboratory, in a, in a laboratory environment, you would probably find it easier to create an open circuit than you would a uh, short circuit for this particular task. So, let's pick a ground and terminate our line in a short circuit. Then we need a test port. Just put it here and then connect it to one side of the line. Okay, now uh, remember that we decided to simulate at 1 GHz. This is very important. We need to pick the right frequency because the wavelength is related to frequency and velocity of propagation. So we'll put 1 GHz, uh, say that it's a single point, apply, and then click OK. Now we open a new graph, just right click on graph, new graph, we'll call it RG58 Z note, rectangular graph. We we'll right click to add a new measurement. It will be an impedance measurement at port 1. It will come from schematic RG58. We want the magnitude of the impedance. Make sure that this is selected. Click apply and then OK. And now we've just got to click simulate and hope for the best. Ooh, look at that. We've got a 50.4, roughly, 50.4 ohms characteristic impedance. Now the RG58 cable is rated to have a 50 ohm impedance. So we're very, very close and this goes to show just how accurate the simulator can be.